Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. David here. Hope you're having a great day. Episode two of our mini series on how to record and mix heavy electric guitars. In this episode, I will show you some basic mixing moves, but some of my favorite plugins and the settings that I usually use to enhance electric guitar sounds. I will also show you a couple of techniques for those ambient mics that we tracked the previous session, particularly useful in my opinion for this type of guitars, stop and go metal core guitars. I'm not a fan of ambient mics on on electric guitars in general, but there are a couple of tricks that can be an option if you tracked an ambient mic for stop and go riffs that I want to share with you. If you haven't seen the previous episode, the link is gonna be in the info box down below. We've seen how we recorded the guitars, what we used, what cabinet, what speakers, which mics, we listened to each individual mic, how it sounded in solo, and then in combination with the others, all the three performance we used. So if you haven't seen the first episode, check it out. But let's start with the ambient mics. As a general rule, I'm not a fan of ambient mics on heavy electric guitars. They kind of smear the sound and they make it less focused. But in this case, where I have a riff like this with stop and goes, I kind of like at least to try to use the ambient mic uh, so that the reverb, the ambient, fills the gaps in between the notes on the stop and go riffs. So let me solo you the ambient mics as they were recorded. What you're hearing here is just the raw recording, no EQ, no anything on any of the tracks. These are the ambient mics. Now, my room where we recorded the guitars is very dead, even for being a control room. This is the way I like it. And so the ambient mics are not roomy mics. They don't give me a roomy kind of sound. You can tell they are far away. But there's no reverb, there's no actual room because the room is so dead. So the first thing that I do with these kind of ambient mics is to add a reverb. And let me show you what I'm using here. I'm just using D-verb, room large, you can see the settings. And this is how the ambient mics sound with that reverb on now. Now, if I leave this ambient on the whole time, to me, it kind of smear the sound way too much. Let me play it to you. This is without the ambient. And again, depending on what you like and the effect that you want, this could be okay. I mean, it's not wrong, especially for only a section of a song or a breakdown, something like that. But the way I like to use it is more to have the ambient, the reverb, to fill the gaps in between the notes, because in this way, the pattern played remains in focus, and we have just a little bit of ambient when the note stops. And there are several ways you can do this. I'm showing you few, because depending on how complicated the pattern is, you might find one works better than the other. So the first one is very simple. I just open a compressor on the ambient channel and I trigger it with either the DI track, which I don't have. In this case, I just pick the most dynamic track that I have among all the mics. You can see the 257s are pretty flat and the sub kick and the ribbon mics are more dynamic. So I just send one of these tracks, in this case, the sub kick track, as a trigger for this compressor. So the level of the ambient tracks gets pinned down when the guitar is playing and is coming out only in between notes. Let me play it to you with the compressor on. And you can set the reverbs to be a little shorter if you like. That's up to your taste. Just tweak them the way you want it. Okay, so this is pretty simple. It's just a side chain. Pick the DI track or one of the most dynamic tracks that you have among all your mics and just trigger the compressor you put on the ambient tracks. 
The other way is very basic, it's very simple, and it depends on how complicated the pattern is. If it's an easy pattern, this can be an option, quick and easy to set up. If it's a complicated pattern, this will take you way too much time and you're better off using one of the other techniques. But this is very simple. You just turn the volume all the way down and we just automate the level of the ambient tracks in the gaps between notes. We just do the first one, we add a little fade at the beginning, and we simply copy this and paste it on all the gaps. And again, this depends on how your pattern is, you know, because if it's on grid, it's easy and fast to do this, you can see. But if it's a complicated pattern, you might want to use one of the other techniques. And when you've done the first one, you can just copy it and just paste it on the other performance. And then you have it. Let's hear this one. without the ambient. The third technique is similar, but again, depending on how your pattern is, I'm giving you options so you can try and with time you will understand which one is faster and easier for you to set up. The third technique involves creating a trigger track, which you can create with MIDI, but then you need a gate that it can be triggered with MIDI, or you can copy, again, one of the most dynamic tracks, the DI if you have it, or one of the most dynamic mics, where you can see clearly the picks and the notes. Cut the last note as you can see from the screen, send this track to a bus that triggers an expander gate. In this case, the expander gate is going before the reverb, while before the compressor was after the reverb, for obvious reason. And these trigger tracks are not going to any output, they are only used to trigger the expander gate. So we want these bits here to open the gate on the ambient track. So you can see the settings, the expander gate is first and the reverb is after it. And you create this trigger track just by copying one of the tracks and cutting and pasting. As you can see, I've already started doing it here, but this is how you do it, you know? You either just look at the waveform where the last note is, or if it's on grid, you just cut on grid. So this is how it looks. The pink one is left ambient and the purple one is right ambient track. So each trigger track was a copy of one of the performances and we just send that pre-fader again to a bus that triggers our expander gate. And this is how it sounds. Again, without ambient. Okay, so these are three ways you can use uh, ambient mics on electric guitars, especially on metal core stop and go electric guitars. So now let me show you some of my favorite plugins and some settings that I like for electric guitars without going into details because this is not a full song so I don't have to fit the guitars with everything else otherwise there would be a lot more mixing. I just want to give you some options for general treatment, general enhancing of electric guitars. Of course every mix is going to be different. So as we said what we are listening is the raw tracks. No EQ, no anything, no processing at all. So the first thing that I would like to do is to take a look at the spectrum analyzer to see where we at bandwidth wise, because the first moves are usually filters to box in the sound and remove unwanted frequencies. And these are the raw tracks. We recorded a sub kick, we recorded SM57, so we should have a pretty wide bandwidth. So I want to take a look if I need to filter something. It doesn't really look like it needs filtering, doesn't it? And I swear there's absolutely nothing on these guitars. Not even filters here, not on the buses, you can see, not on the individual channels, nothing at all. I just use the SSL channel for gain staging and to flip the phase. So there's absolutely nothing and yet when microphones are positioned well and when the sound coming out from the amp is not unbalanced or too bright or too boomy, you can do that. You can record a sound that is pretty much boxed in already. 
okay? If anything, this one needs a little bit of top end uh, as opposed to cutting and, you know, just to be anal, we can high pass a little bit, but there's not really that much information below 50, below 60 hertz. So anyway, my favorite moves and plugins, uh, even the basics. For example, the first one is always the SSL. And if I use filters, I usually use the SSL filters. So let's say I'm gonna high pass here at 25 and I don't really need anything on top. But I like the SSL as a first processing just for a little push. If you turn the threshold knob of the compressor up, and I like to do that so that the first light is just barely lighting up and then I back off a little bit. But even if it's not compressing, it adds a little bit of grit that I like, with and without. Okay, so this is very basic, just the very first move. But the first plugin that I really like on electric guitars is a new one, it's True Iron by Kazrock, a brand that is well known not just for K-Clip 3, which I adore, you know that, but also for all the guitar simulation thermionic stuff. And this True Iron is a saturator, and this is exactly the settings that I like. I like this 111C voicing, the strength about here depends on how hot the guitars are hitting it and the crush at 24. Let's hear it with and without. I'm also trying to level match. So this is just as easy as it looks like. I just like the true iron on guitars for more saturation and more grit and more body. The second one I like very much on guitars, especially in this case the shimmer when you miss top end like we're doing right now. But if you have a little bit of a light sound on guitars, the thickness knob is also very good on the Slate Revival, with and without. Okay, and this is free, should still be free. The next one is a plugin that I recently presented here and I found it to be extremely good for guitars. It's the Smart EQ from Sonable. This is an intelligent EQ that automatically analyzes and rebalance totally every track, every signal to be pleasant to our ears by psychoacoustic standards. So in this case, I let the EQ analyze my guitar bus and give me a curve and then I adjust it with and without. Okay, the next one is another saturator. I like saturator on guitars. If used correctly, if you don't reach the point in which sounds like bad saturation, bad distortion. The Waves Cobalt Sapphira is very good. I like it. It's very simple. You just got even and odd harmonics. You have a visual representation of what harmonics is adding for A, B, C, D, F. And this is the setting that I usually like. It's just default when you open it on B, when the return of the warm odd harmonics a little pull down. There's also the G settings, which is a lot more obvious. And sometimes depending what level you're hitting any saturator at, I like to use one or the other. The next one is in case you have a very thin sounding recording of your guitar. So just, you know, if we didn't have, for example, I don't know, our uh, two sub kick and ribbon mics. Okay, to me this, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's a good sound. The raw sound that we have is pretty bottom heavy in this case, but just in case we want to add a little more bottom end to what would be our recording if we just had the 257s, the max bass from Waze is one of my favorites.
okay? So in this case, if I added my sub kick and ribbon mic would be too much low end, which is a little bit too much already, but you get the point. If you have uh, just 157 or just, you know, the sound you recorded from the amp is a little skinny, lacks of low end of real body, Max Bass can help you. And of course we don't have a bass so right now you know uh, we would we would make the guitars gigantic just because you know we don't have anything else filling the song but when the bass is in this would be probably too much low end but again it's just an example max bass is something i usually like on vocals and guitars the next one is a really cool plugin by mac dsp is an analog channel a tape emulator which is good for both controlling dynamics and controlling high end if you have guitars that are a little too bright it's useful to control dynamics and to reshape the low end let me show it to you Okay, some models works better on guitars than others, but you get the point. This push-pull uh, curve that you can adjust with the bump and with the roll-off, it's useful and a quick, easy way to reshape the low end, especially when the bass is in. And it also adds um, a little bit with dynamic, with taming, harsh frequency. You have vintage and modern mode, different modes. It's a good plugin for guitars. Now a dynamic trick that I showed you before, I'm pretty sure, but uh, when you have a stop and go um, riff like this, this is something that I like to do on guitars, either on the guitar bus itself or in parallel sometimes, but this is the settings. I like to use the API 2500 and I have a hardware to do that. I usually use that with the attack at 10 or 30, usually 10. So a slow attack ratio at three, just to enhance the pick every note after each stops. It just makes it more aggressive. Like it was played harder. Let me play it to you without and with. Okay, so I have a video actually on this trick specifically if you're interested in it. But let's see a few others. One is for opening up the stereo image, one of my favorites, it's free. It's the A1 stereo control and in expert mode, it gives you some more options. But yeah, this is pretty straightforward with and without. And of course he had the save bass. So if we want a mono signal below a certain frequency and we don't need to go that high, I would, I would not go more than 80, even because we saw we don't have that much information anyway uh, in there from the raw recording. Let's give it a little more. And another one that I like for stereo imaging is the Ozone Imager because it's a multiband so you can spread only the frequencies, the range that you, that you want. And this is particular because it kind of changes the sound a little bit. So pay attention when you use it, but um, let me show it to you.
so you can hear pay attention because it kind of boosts the levels of that frequency range that you're opening up of course and one range that i really like to spread is this one here which for many would be way too low to stereoize or to open up the stereo image but it really makes the guitars very wide <laughs> And I don't think I have the, yeah, I have the mono performance too. So let's try because we, of course, we lose a little bit of mono compatibility with that. But we have a center performance, so we can try to pull that up a little bit and see what happens. Okay, so combinations of these things, the center performance, the stereo width, mono in some range below a certain frequency are the tools that you want to use to make stereo guitars wide but still somehow mono compatible. I'm showing you the last one just not to make this video too long is again the Ozone, in this case the uh, multiband saturator and this is really good on guitars. I like it on bass, I like it on guitars, it's pretty amazing. So let's play a little bit with it. Okay, just an example. Uh, like I said, uh, if I can, I rather use less EQ and more saturation on guitar to bring up what's missing. In this case, this this guitar bus is a little bottom heavy, and but otherwise, I would just use an EQ or rebalance things. And of course, I like more broad strokes and wider bells on guitars. If you go narrow, they kind of start to sound phasey. But depending on what you want, you can reshape the V in the mids if you like the kind of sound that has the mid scooped out. But in general, EQ-wise, I prefer wide bells and wide curves for electric guitars. And we already recorded left and right with slightly different EQ sound. But in case your performance were recorded exactly with the same setup with no changes, one way, easy way to spread the stereo image and to widen your guitars is just to do a subtle different EQ from left and right. Okay, so these were just example. This is not a finished song. We don't have any other elements. So these were just my go-tos, some options you can try uh, on, on electric guitars. I hope you liked this mini series. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave us a like. If you have any question, leave it in the comment down below. Check out our links in the info box too. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.